What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video we have a lot to talk about in regards to uh, one of the new components of the version 13 update that's going to be arriving on One Piece Treasure Cruise like literally tomorrow. The maintenance period does start very shortly, uh, April 24th I believe it said. Yeah, so it's, it's literally going to be going on tomorrow. After it does conclude, we should have all of the new stuff included. Uh, and the big thing that we're talking about in this video is in regards to the ship upgrades for level 11 and 12. Um, however, we're not 100% sure whether or not we're getting the new Pirate King Adventures game mode as soon as the update goes live. I will live stream when the maintenance period is supposed to conclude. So we will stream it and we'll see what happens. But the big thing here is about the shipyard update and uh, the introductory uh, upgrades for certain ships. Now, before we get into that, there is an update to a login bonus that's going to be occurring between April 24th after the maintenance for version 13 and May 25th, which is a month, right? So it's the end of the anniversary period most of the time. So even if you do only start or re-roll an account during the anniversary Sugo Fest when it does drop on May 12th or May 11th PST, depending on where you are in the world, you can still get your hands on the login rewards, which gives you a total of 30 Super Cola. Remember that you do need Super Cola in order to upgrade a ship from level 10 to level 11. And you do need it for level 11 into level 12 as well. So make sure you uh, log in for five days, which is nothing, to get your hands on this Super Cola. We don't know currently how much Super Cola is required to get a ship from 11 to 12 or from 10 to 11 even. So that is going to be an important component to all of this. Now, what we have to talk about in today's video is that there is a list of ships that are going to be receiving upgrades with their level 11 and 12 counterparts with version 13. And some of these upgrades are pretty crazy. So we're going to take the time to go through each of these ships and kind of discuss how good or, or maybe not as good of upgrades they actually have received. In order to upgrade your ship to level 11 or higher, you will need to use Super Cola obtained from Pirate King Adventures, which of course we should be getting with the update, but we're not sure. Maybe after the update, there'll be another notice saying that the new game mode starts uh, maybe at the start of the next month. We're not really too certain when that's going to be. So let's actually talk about each of these new ships, but we need to talk about exactly what they are going to be upgrading from. The first ship that is going to be receiving an update is the dinghy. So you see the base level of this ship is 120 recovery to your captain, 1.3 HP, and makes it easier to land perfects. Obviously not a great ship, but then when we have a look at what occurs when you reach level 12 for the dinghy It will boost the crew's chance of landing on a matching slot, which is fantastic Boosting the captain's recovery by 800. It's a very substantial increase and depending on what captain you go with This could actually be very good captains that are focused on healing mechanics like they heal based off of their recovery level or captains that have effects that heal based on you know, how many perfects you hit, heal a certain value of your captain's recovery back at the end of the turn. Those types of captains could really abuse the dinghy ship's recovery bonus. It also gives a 1.65 times attack boost, by the way, 1.5 HP, and makes it easier to land perfects, which goes hand in hand, which was what I was saying with captains that heal based on the amount of perfects that you hit. This is going to work really well with those types of captains. So honestly, this dinghy level 12 ship looks pretty busted, right? And you got to remember that after you reach level 12, you then get access to modifications to add further HP, attack, or recovery bonuses. And then when you get those bonuses, if all of them are four-star bonuses or better, you get access to additional effects. So these ships are going to become legitimately broken. The next ship receiving an upgrade is the Merry Go. So currently, it is a 300 HP bonus to the captain. You get a 1.5 times attack boost and also makes it easier to land perfects. However, when the Going Merry receives its upgrade at level 12, it gives minus one cooldown at the start of the quest, boosting the HP of the captain by 20,000. That's a very big upgrade. Then boosting the crew's attack by 1.65 times and makes it easier to land perfect strikes. So this is a really nice ship. The fact that it gives really good attack buffs, decent HP buff because remember, you know, 20,000, you know, 20,000 is a pretty good value. But then if you stack additional multipliers on top of it, like 1.3s, 1.2 HP boosts, 
your HP is going to be very substantial. But then the minus one cooldown is the, is the is the icing on the cake there. So going Merry is going to be a very good generic ship in most content out there. Very very good. Now the next ship being the Coffin Boat. This was the classic back in the day. You know, clearing the Mihawk Forest, getting access to this ship. The slashes in the very bare bones basic level of one piece treasure cruise you know in the first year of its release slashes were the best team due to clash mihawk being so potent however you know as time has progressed the slasher ships have gotten better but let's see what they're doing with this ship the base level right now is 1.5 attack and hp but reduces your captain's recovery by 700 slashes aren't typically focused on healing mechanics so that doesn't matter too much but 1.5 attack and hp is nothing to scoff at so with the upgrade they actually did not remove the uh captain's recovery reduction but what they've done is now it's a 1.8 times attack boost and 1.75 times hp so it's not like a major upgrade for this ship but this ship is going to provide so much more additional damage to essentially any other ship that you can think of unless if you're using like you know a strength x or quick captain with the uh the arlong ship to give you like really good damage output for those types of teams yes but generically speaking 1.8 attack on a ship is legitimately crazy so the next one is miss love duck which is alveda's ship now this is one of the ships that actually received an upgrade not that long ago but now it's going to be receiving a further upgrade as well i believe this ship and a couple of the other ships you see are actually going to be in the Rayleigh's Bazaar that you can pick up but this ship gives your striker characters a 1.5 attack boost it will slightly boost the chances of landing on a matching slot reduces damage taken by 10 percent and then gives your striker characters a 100 base attack boost like that's actually pretty good honestly this is not a terrible it, it does say boost their attack by 100 it's the same wording as like crewmate effects for your for your crew so treat this as kind of like that you know like it's a crewmate ability where you just get 100 base attack bonus on top of having the 1.5 attack damage reduction matching slots this is actually a really good ship as it has so many beneficial effects, but it is still relegated in the fact that, you know, you, you can only really use it with mono strikers, but the all these bonuses that they're giving you are actually pretty substantial. So the upgrades to this ship is going to give your striker characters still a 1.5 times attack boost, boost chances of landing matching slots, 20% damage reduction, and a 600 base attack bonus to your striker characters. So despite the fact that you're only getting a 1.5 ship, the 600 base attack is actually pretty nice. I don't know the mathematics behind, you know, at what point does this overtake a certain multiplier type of ship, because I think it is still dependent on what characters you're using, but still a 600 base attack bonus with a 1.5 times attack boost, and, you know, a buff to the damage reduction too, going from 10% to 20% is also really nice. So I think that this is a really good ship if you are running the, the mono striker type teams. But I believe there's going to be another ship we'll talk about later that is also still striker focused. That is, is, it might be better depending on the team composition, of course. Now, one of the best ships that's ever been released in One Piece Treasure Cruise, the Moby Dick, is also receiving an upgrade, which is so cool. So this ship at current point is a really interesting ability of providing 1.5 attack and 1.4 times hp so this is like a like a like a kind of similar version as coffin boat where it gives you attack and hp really good multipliers but it has the drawback of starting your health at 50 percent um you know at starting at 50 percent really uh and this is good for a couple different teams you know teams that really focused on trying to be at low hp thresholds really loved this ship it was a really good ship at the time and of course worked well with with legend whitebeard and legend crocodile and any other type of team that was focused around being low hp thresholds so let's see what buffs this one got so with moby dick it will still start your health at 50 percent but it will boost the cruise attack by 1.55 and a 1.6 times hp multiplier but if your hp is below 30 percent at the start of the attack it will boost your attack by a further 1.2 times multiplier let me pull up the calculator here 1.55 multiplied by uh, 1.2 gives you a 1.86 times multiplier 
That is so nuts. So if you're able to secure a team and be at that low HP threshold, or if you know that the enemy is going to cut your health and you're going to be at low HP thresholds, you can just run this ship and you get a rainbow 1.86 times multiplier for a ship is so wild. So the amount of damage you get from it is so good. But still, any team that is focused around being at low HP threshold, this is going to be a fantastic ship for those types of teams. So this is a really interesting one as well. The Thousand Sunny, which was a story mode ship for completing Eni's lobby. And it's, a, it's just a simple 1.5 times attack boost. However, it does have a special. This was, I believe, the first ship in the game to have a special. And it's a 15 turn cooldown, which is quite a long time of stall. Because any effect on your crew that reduces cooldown, like captain abilities... Um, forbidden tomes, sockets, whatever, um, you know, crewmate abilities, anything that revolves around cooldown production never affected the ship, which means that these really high cooldowns, you really just have to store for them, which is not fun. But the effect of this ship was a 50,000 fixed damage to all enemies. Um, I don't actually know, I don't think it was fixed damage, I think it was straight up just 50,000 damage. If they have defense, then that does still negate the damage from the Thousand Sunny, but still. Uh, this was really useful in a couple pieces of content back in the day, being able to wave clear mobs, uh, just so that you could, like, focus your damage on a boss. So, yeah, this ship is interesting, but let's see what they actually gave it in terms of updates, because this is probably one of my favorite updates, I think, that they've given. So, first of all, Thousand Sunny is going to now be a 1.65 times attack, 1.3 times HP, and makes it easier to land perfects. So, the base ship has been upgraded to a pretty good standard now uh, an extra 0.15 attack and an hp boost which it never had and now making it easier to land perfects but the biggest upgrade comes with its special ability the special will now go to a nine turn cooldown and it will boost the crew's attack by 2.25 times for one turn as well as dealing 100,000 damage to all enemies this is such a big update the fact that any team now can just get access to a 2.25 times attack boost whenever you want it's so powerful like there's so many different teams that are gonna become more accessible now right because sometimes there's like a mini boss stage where you just lack a bit of damage you know sometimes you can only get access to a two times attack boost and it might not be enough damage to get through and now you just get this ship that can provide a 2.25 times attack boost whenever you need it and of course against you know boss stages it's not going to be as useful potentially I, I don't know depending on the team composition of course but the fact that any team now can get access to this one-time attack boost well it's not even a one-time attack boost you could literally stall for this multiple times if you wanted to do that but this is just really cool and it has a lot of implications for further ships in the future that could also receive buffs and it would be cool if they even gave ships specials with this type of system from what we've seen thus far though if a, if a ship doesn't have a special they don't give it a special unfortunately it would have been cool if they were able to do that but still this is just a fantastic update for this ship and uh, i think it's going to be one of the fan favorites i think because not only is it a rainbow ship you can use with every team but that special is just super good so the next one that we're going to be talking about is the don quixote pirate ship where it boosts driven characters attack by 1.5 and gives them a 1.35 times hp boost it makes it easy easier for driven characters to land a perfect but then it also has the special which is also on a 15 turn cooldown which is kind of harsh but it gives you a 0.2 chain boost for two turns so not a very big chain boost but sometimes the little bit of additional chain was just all you needed to get over the boss and of course this ship was with the doflamingo uh, legend doflamingo v1 and that character as a captain was very focused around continuously hitting your perfects if you missed a perfect you lost all of your attack multiplier so this type of ship was perfect for legend dofi back in the day but any mono driven team wanted to use this ship because it had a very solid attack boost good hp boost 1.35 is nothing to scoff at especially back in the day and then also easier perfects and then just giving additional bonus chain with a ship so i'm looking forward to seeing how this one's going to update so with this ship it now will give your driven characters a 1.8 attack boost that is so crazy 1.5 times hp makes it easier for driven characters to land perfects so just bigger numbers across the board which is great the special ability, which is now 10 turn cooldown, boosts the chain multiplier by 1.0 for two turns. That is a huge difference. A 1.0 chain is huge. 
uh, increases chain multiplier boost by plus 0.2 if you already have a chain boost. That's so good. So not only is it getting a huge upgrade to the multipliers, but it has a reduced redundancy special. So even if you got a chain boost, heck, just, just buff the chain boost you've already got. That is so good. So good. Uh, the Dofi ship is fantastic if you're running a mono-driven team for sure. Uh, but of course, it does require the investment of Super Cola and then further modifications to make it even better. So I don't think all of these ships are really going to see play. Like the Dofi ship, I don't think too many people are going to upgrade this ship specifically. But it is going to make your driven teams a lot better. This is a really solid ship. 1.8 is so crazy. So the next ship that we'll talk about is the Rocket Man. Now the Rocket Man was a powerhouse focused ship where it gave a 1.55 times attack boost, which was, I believe, the highest multiplier in the game at this point for a ship. But uh, it also had this really cool effect that would heal HP based on the amount of powerhouse characters on the crew as well. So I believe if you had a full team of powerhouse, you would get an additional 900 HP at the end of the turn. So you could heal like 1900 at the end of the turn. And if you run a full team of powerhouse, you get the 1.55 attack. It was really cool actually. Like mono powerhouse with this ship was very potent. But it also has a special on a 17 turn cooldown, which is really way too high. And it was just a single target damage dealing special. That's all it did. So it was a very bland special. But the main component as to why people would use this ship back in the day is the fact that if you ran characters that were not powerhouse on your team, it severely cut your crew's HP down. So uh, you, you could run a zombie team with non-powerhouse units, have really low HP, and then use one of those zombie captains that said that if you are above 50% HP, you don't die from a single hit. So it allowed you to overheal very, or get, get to max HP really easily with your auto heal sockets. And that was the main reason why people would use this ship. But hopefully with the update, it becomes more potent for powerhouse, you know, allowing them to actually run, like, make this be used as an actual ship in, in mono powerhouse teams. But let's go ahead and have a look. So Rocketman's upgrade is going to provide 1.85 times attack to powerhouse. That's so crazy. It cuts your crew's HP by 30% and heals HP at the end of the turn, more depending on the number of powerhouse characters in the crew, up to 20. You can heal 2,500 HP with a full team of powerhouse? That is so wild. Oh my god. So this plus auto heal sockets healing 3,500 HP per turn, that is very, very good. Um, and with, with, that eight, with, the, uh, with the attack boost as well, that really strong attack boost and the amount of healing that you're getting, that's so good. So the special, 11 turns, deals uh, basically 100,000 fixed damage, or well, it's not fixed damage, but 100,000 damage to a single target, boosts the color affinity of powerhouse by two times for one turn, increases the color affinity by 0.2 if you already have it in effect. That's a really good ship. Uh, yeah, mono powerhouse are going to absolutely love it. Um, this is like very similar to Dofi in a way, where like if you if you are running mono driven, the Dofi ship is going to be so good for that. If you're running mono powerhouse, Rocket Man is going to be so good for mono powerhouse. But it re does require that investment, and being able to just launch a special to get a two times color affinity boost whenever you want is, is really good. And even if you've already got a color affinity boost, you can just buff it as well, because why not? So yeah, it's really good, but of course, it is still focusing on running like the full powerhouse squad, so it is team dependent, but still, this is a really good looking ship on paper. The next one on the list is the Revolutionary Army Blackbirds, which will give minus one cooldown to the crew, 1.2 HP, and if the crew has a strength, dex, and a quick character, boosts those three colors by 1.55. So quite obviously this was supposed to be used with Legend Lucy and obviously six plus into Sabo. Uh, and it works very, very well with him. Uh, being able to run, you know, the, the full strength decks quick squad, getting a really good attack boost, health boost and cooldown. Fantastic ship when it came out and is still relatively usable in today's standards in my opinion. But of course, these upgrades are gonna be kind of crazy. So the upgrades for the Blackbirds give minus one cooldown 1.4 HP, and then if you have a Strength, Dex, and Quick, boost Strength, Dex, and Quick by 1.7, it's very good. And if you have no Psy or Int characters on the crew, boosting the attack of Strength, Dex, and Quick by 1.1 further. Alright, so how much is that? 1.7. 1.7 multiplied by a 1.1, a 1.87 multiplier, so it's, it's just as good as Moby Dick when you're below 30% HP. But this is more focused on running Strength Dex Quick. And remember that Legend Lucy actually recently received Level Limit Break upgrades. So with his 6+, plus and Level Limit Break 5, 
and this ship as well, it's going to be pretty insane. Um, it would have been cool if, you know, it had further minus one cooldown. Potentially, it will get that when you add modifications with four-star higher rankings, I would think. Um, but still, being able to have a 1.87 ship with a cooldown reduction as well, it's going to be a very, very nice ship to run. Um, it does still require you to have one of each color of strength, dex, and quick on your team, so you can't run it just mono strength, mono dex, etc., but if you find yourself in a situation where you're not running Sio Int characters and you do have one strength, one dex, and one quick character on the team, this is going to be a really powerful ship. Moving on, we have a, an unlockable ship as well. We've got the Megalo. Now, the Megalo, still to this day, is still very good. Um, so it requires you to have a Sio Int captain to get the most out of it, though. So it gives your crew a 1.25 HP boost. If you have a Sio and Int captain, you get a 1.5 times attack boost. And it also boosts the captain's recovery by 200 and gives 10% damage reduction. So if you do have a sight into captain, you, you get access to the rainbow attack boost for the crew. But the big thing is the is the special of Megalo, which is why it was so good. On an eight turn cooldown, which is very reasonable, providing a one turn orb lock is fantastic. Uh, being able to just generate a, a free orb lock whenever you want was so good, especially when you're trying to complete garb challenges back in the day. Being able to generate a full board of slots and lock them for multiple boss stages was super good. And I know that uh, this type of effect is going to continually be useful moving forward so i'm very intrigued to see this upgrade megalo will now provide a 1.4 hp boost and then state that if you have a site or an int captain boost the top row characters attack by 1.6 boosting the middle and bottom row characters attack by 1.8 interesting boost the captain's recovery by 600 and reduce damage taken by 15 percent so when i'm reading this the main thing that comes to mind is legend shirahoshi uh, shirahoshi has that that component of giving a really small attack boost to herself but then provides the bigger attack boost to the crewmates and i'm not really a big fan of that specifically and i think you know even still even the fact that the captains get a lowered attack multiplier i don't really think it's the end of the world because it's still 1.6 your crewmates will have a 1.8 multiplier because the big thing about the ship and why you would often use it in the first place is due to the special so the special is still eight turn cooldown and it reduces slot bind duration by one turn and it provides there you go an orb lock but now it's for two turns which is a very big update I think this is fantastic. Uh, of course, the, the fact that the, the top row and the middle row have and the bottom row have all different attack multipliers, not a fan of that specifically, but <laughs> two-turn all block, yo. A two-turn all block on an eight-turn cooldown for free whenever you want, and also just adding the effect to remove one turn of slot bind, which is kind of negligent. There aren't too many situations where that's going to be useful. And this is a really good update to Megalo, all things considered, though. This is a really, really strong ship. The second last ship that we're talking about is the Peace of Spadil, which is the Spade Pirate ship. This one is interesting. So it boosts Powerhouse, Free Spirit, and Fighter characters by 1.2. It also provides 1.5 attack, and then 1.6 attack if you're below 30% at the start of the turn. So that's pretty much how it works. It's, it's a very basic ship, but this was the ship that came out during Clash Ace. Now, Clash Ace was focused around Powerhouse specifically, Powerhouse and Free Spirit. Now, remember, a lot of Ace characters in the game are typically shooter characters. So it is kind of funny that we got the Ace Spade Pirate ship and it doesn't boost shooters, right? However, let's go ahead and have a look at what this character or what the ship is going to do, rather, um, with its upgrades. Peace of Spadil is now going to provide minus one cooldown at the start of the quest and will now boost Powerhouse, Free Spirit, fighter and shooter characters now which is fantastic by a 1.25 hp 1.6 times attack and a 1.8 times attack if you're below 30 percent before you attack so it is still pretty much the same ship but higher multipliers and minus one cooldown and now adding shooters on top of it you know even though it does add shooters i don't think it really changes a whole lot because shooter teams aren't typically known for running themselves at low hp thresholds but once again if you're in the situation where you know you're up against content you know you're going to be at low hp thresholds either way being able to just generate the fact that you can get a 1.8 attack boost might actually be good uh, but then again there are still other ships that still need to receive buffs further on down the line like the ace striker ship from the training forest the kizaru ship as well those two ships are shooter focused that could provide good buffs to those teams but then again this is another powerhouse ship it's another free spirit ship 
it's a fighter ship so those classes do receive buffs inherently from this ship being upgraded. The final ship that is going to be receiving an upgrade with the version 13 upgrade is the Grudge Dolph, which is the Hawkins ship. This one provides minus one cooldown and then specifically boosts Slasher and Striker HP by 1.25. So only boosting those classes and then boost their attack by 1.6 when you have a Rainbow, a Wano slot or a matching slot. Uh, it's kind of weird. Yeah, Rainbow, Wano, or their own matching slot. And then you also get 1.5 times attack otherwise. So if you do find yourself in having Rainbow, Wano, or a matching slot, you get 1.6. Otherwise, it's still a 1.5. But also, you get 1,000 HP healed at the end of the turn. So if you're running a Slasher or a Striker-focused team, this is another really good ship that you could focus in on. So with the upgrades, this ship is now going to provide, again, minus one cooldown, but now will boost the attack of Slasher, Striker, and Cerebral. So Cerebral receiving a bit of a buff here, 1.25 HP, boosting the attack by 1.75 when you have a Rainbow, a Wano, or a Matching Slot, a 1.6 otherwise, and 2,000 heal at the end of the turn. This ship is freaking bizarre. Like, this is so strong. Like, man, this is so good. But the only thing that is kind of bad about it is that, you know, if, you if you're running a team that is focused around tandem slots, you know, obviously for super tandem uh, mechanics, you don't get bigger buffs if you have a tandem slot. You'll only get the 1.6 because you need to have Rainbow, Wano, or, or a matching type slot to get the 1.75. So that's the only real drawback I see from this ship. And also the fact that it is only focusing on Slashers, Strikers, and Cerebrals. However, if you are running one of those classes, and you know you can generate the, the Rainbow, the Wano, or you are still using just generic matching slots, then this is going to be a really, really good ship for those types of teams. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information that we have right now in regards to the brand new shipyard update i'm super excited for this and i'm i I'm really cannot wait to get my hands on on some of these upgraded ships and let me know down below in the comment section which one of these new upgrades are you most excited for i'll likely make an additional video talking more about just ships in general and kind of giving a bit of a tier list as to where i think each ship is ranked and you know these new ships definitely change things up in terms of where certain ships are ranked against each other for sure so we might have to make an additional video talking about that but that is going to wrap up from me thank you so much for watching the video if you guys enjoyed it make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and that guys i'll see you guys within the next video